Welcome everybody, this is Greg with Laser Bear Industries here to show off installing the iPad LCD into our new CRT style case. So this case will turn this little iPad display into a CRT lookalike uh, for the Mr. Project or realistically anything that uses a uh, HDMI output will be able to display on this display. So the screen has a high resolution of 2048 by 1536 pixels uh, in a 4x3 aspect ratio. Uh, the Mr. Project supports this resolution as a native resolution that you can set up in the config files on the uh, Mr. So you can get some really crisp looking uh, content on this display. And it also has a very low latency. So it uh, doesn't have any real um, screen lag for the games. So uh, you will have to supply the iPad LCD and the driver board. And if you're installing speakers, you'll have to, to supply speakers with your kit. Uh, we will be offering speakers soon once we get all the stuff to do it. But for the meantime, you're going to have to uh, source a set of speakers. And they're 16 by 36 millimeters, I believe. Uh, it's on the um, product page for this. Uh, so that kit you can purchase AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, it's all over the place and should be easy to easy enough to source out. So to start with you're going to want to install the uh, driver boards adapter board for the FFC. So this adapter board is directional to the FFC and that's something you got to really make sure you get correct when you're attaching to the display so that it'll function. So on the iPad LCD there is a FFC with a white line on one side and the black and the other side has the gold contacts. So when you put that into the connector that white line is supposed to be up, the gold contacts should be down and your goal is to make that white line disappear. So you want to push that connector all the way in until that white line is completely gone before flipping down. Because if that white line is visible, it will not make contact. So after you've done that, our kits come with a piece of 3M double-sided tape. So one of the things we ran into is there's several different versions of this board. Like this one happens to have a smaller version of the board is a bigger version of the board. So it ended up being a little bit more efficient to supply a piece of double stick foam that's cut to size of the biggest board that we've found and stick that board to the back side of the LCD so that it doesn't flop around because this FFC cable is really easy to damage if you flex it too much. So you don't want this kind of hanging around and floating around inside the case. So it's just a simple piece of uh, double stick tape. Uh, before you put that on, you'll definitely want to have your FFC f coming from the um, interface board that you've got attached to the interface board. And that should be attached with the blue side of the FFC facing up away from the PCB. Easy enough stuff. Use your double stick tape, kind of press it down, make sure it's out of the way. Um, the next step would be to install the LCD into the case. So I'm going to set that stuff off to the side and we'll just do it with this LCD that's kind of been prepared. When you get your LCD, it's going to have some kind of film on the front. You can remove that film before you, well, you should remove that film before you uh, install it into the case. So you would just want to peel that up and then when you set it down, there is uh, angled lips here at the bottom side where the L uh, speakers fit. The bottom edge of the LCD fits into that, and it drops down into the casing, and your kit will come with two um, little tabs that get pushed in. So they're going to be in with the screws. Um, the new ones that we started printing are tighter fit. Uh, this is so that they just 
have no chance of coming out. Some of the ones that we printed of the first design were really easy to slide out, which I'm just using because I'm not finalizing this one. I'm just showing it off. Uh, but you should use the ones that have come in your kit and just slide them in. They will not go all the way in. You just want to get them in until they're snug and they're not easy to pull out. They've got a taper to them so that once they're in, the, the taper keeps them from kind of working their way out. So after you've got that done, um, you're going to want to get your circuit board installed into the CRT case. So it just slides into the slots in the back and there's four screw posts that you'll run some screws into. You're going to want a, a short kind of stubbier screwdriver to do this part. Uh, big long screwdriver you're just not going to fit into that space. So when you push it all the way back you're going to put two screws into these spaces. And then one screw into either side of the back just to keep it from flopping around. Uh, we're not putting both screws in. Uh, the kits only came with 12 screws. So just like that, you just want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. The two screws at the front uh, do all the support work for the um, HDMI kind of weighting and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, now that you've got those in, the easiest thing to do is to take your front case, lay it face down as close as you can to the circuit board. So once you've done that, some of these little uh, keyboard deals come with a little extra board that they didn't snap off at the factory. Um, personally, I would snap it off. It'll probably get in the way of speakers if you put speakers in. Um, and it just doesn't do anything. It's for an extra add-on board that they don't include with the kit. So it's not really functional for any, any actual purpose. So then the keyboard has a cutout where the uh, cable comes out and that just sits right in there. Uh, and there's two screw holes. You just take two more screws and run them into those two screw slots to hold the keyboard in place. For speakers, you can use a Molex style um, Pico Blade connector. These are 1.25 millimeter spacing. Um, in this particular board, I actually soldered the wires directly to the back sides of the pads on these. So uh, you can see it, it's labeled on what pads do what, and that's all I did for connecting these speakers up because at that time I didn't know what kind of connector this was and I hadn't found it yet. When we start selling these, they will come with a Pico Blade connector already connected to the speakers. So they'll be kind of drop-in speakers. So you won't have to do any soldering or anything like that. Um, so we're just waiting on those Pico Blade connectors. We got the speakers in the uh, other day, so. Then I wired my white and black wires to the left speaker and the black and red wires to my right speaker. So, right speaker, obviously want this to fit in here. Um, our speakers are a little bit tighter than the ones that I linked on Amazon. With the ones on Amazon, you're probably gonna need a little bit of hot glue just to keep them in place. Um, just put a dab of hot glue in the corners just to hold the speakers into the slots. Um, obviously these speakers are a little bit more true to the size that I designed the space for. So they actually get pressed in and they're a press fit. And you just use a screwdriver and push down on each one of the corners until the speaker sits flush, just like so. 
And then last but not least, you need to connect the FFC from the display to the control board. So there is a FFC spot in the bottom, or in the back of the board. You want this blue connector to sit flush and you just drop down the little retention tab. Um, now I'm going to test make sure this works. So one of the, the power supplies you can use is a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, style US, micro USB power support or power supply. And just plug it into the, the uh, micro USB port on the back of the board. So my board powered on, we got a little red light. And my display says no signal. And it's going power saving mode and uh, shut the display off. So I just want to make sure that the display had something on the screen. And pull the power. Make sure my wires are out of the way. If you wanted to, you could um, get these wires taped down with a piece of uh, like electrical tape, or or uh, if you've got it, some um, um, just basically really any tape, just to keep the wires so that they don't kind of flop around in the case. That's entirely up to you. You don't have to. So when we assemble the case, what you want to do is you want to push the top edge as flush as you can so that it looks as nice as possible. And you're going to screw in your um, front edge or top edge spots and just like so. You don't want to go too tight because what will happen is the torsion of the screw will knock part of this in and pull part of this out and it won't be a, uh, a, a nice clean line. So you don't want to go super, super tight, but you do want to get it tight enough that uh, it doesn't come apart super easy or anything. Hold tight there. And there's one on either side and then two on the bottom. And the bottom two, you're going to need a screwdriver that has a longer reach to it. It's just really deep in there. Alright. And plug the power in. You can kind of see that display has a little bit on there. Now, when you use the 5-volt power supply, your maximum brightness isn't as high as the display can go if you were to source a 12-volt power supply. I'm uh, in the process of finding those and seeing if I can get a, a ton of just good quality 12-volt power supplies and we'll offer them on our site for people who want to get the, the brightest that you can out of the display. So, um, the other thing that you've got are these two sliders. They fit into the back of the case, there's uh, the ones on the cases that we're shipping are going to be a little tighter. This just happened to be one of the kind of defect cases that we had printed and weren't shipping to a customer or anything. So the way the sliders work is when you slide it out, there's a certain point where it snaps down if you push down, and that allows you to set the monitor in the tape orientation for uh, games that play in the 90 degree orientation. Um, there's one on each side, so if a game needs to go a different direction, you can do it either direction and have a perfectly usable uh, tape experience off of this monitor. Not having to worry about the whole curved display, which I suppose if you're playing on a desk, it's not terrible 
uh, it definitely will wobble. Um, as long as you can get cords into it, I guess, would be the big one. Eh, should be okay. But anyway, that's the process for assembling. Um, I'll try to get some kind of video of them functioning for when we uh, start offering them as fully assembled units, which uh, we ordered the parts to do that. We'll have about 50 pieces available where people can just buy a fully done, ready to go monitor. Um, and that's about it on this project. Thank you for listening and watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out on Twitter to at Colin Gall or on our website through our uh, contact tool on our website. Thanks and have a wonderful day.